Welcome to the Pre-Med Preacher. Today we're doing an exam review for Physics 250, so we'll get right into it. Hope you guys enjoy. Familiar. Pause the video here and read the first question. Now first you want to start out by drawing a free body diagram. So we're just going to draw a box with a plane. And then we'll draw the force of lift that the wings have on the plane. We'll draw the force of gravity down on the plane. We're going to draw the force of the engine on the plane. And we're going to draw the force of the air on the plane. Now one thing you'll notice if you read the wording more closely is that it's traveling at constant altitude and constant speed. This means that there's no net force acting on the airplane. Therefore, the answer is C. The force of the air equals the force of the engines because it's moving at constant speed. Take a moment to read question number two. For each of these boxes, you're going to want to calculate the force acting on M1 and M2. So the force 1 is equal to 6 kilograms times 9.8, which is the gravitational force on Earth. And that gives you a net force of 58.8 newtons. For M2, you're going to do 5 kilograms times 9.8, because we're still on Earth. And that gives you 49 newtons of net force on the box. Now intuitively, if you look at the answer choices, you can automatically eliminate B, C, and E. Since it's asking about the movement of M1, we know that if we release M2 and gravity pulls M2 down, M1 will move to the right on the page, which leaves us with options A and D. Now if you look at our calculations, A suggests that, there, that the force M1 moves to the right with is 58.8 newtons. However, we know this can't be true because 58.8 newtons is equal to F1, or the normal force that M1 is putting down on the table. Therefore, D is the only choice that we have left, 26.7 newtons to the right on the page. Pause the video to read question three. This question has to do with the law of gravity, which is a formula that can be found on your formula sheet. The force of gravity equals the universal gravitational constant times M1 multiplied by m2, divided by the radius between the two masses squared. If you look at this equation, you'll see that no matter what the masses are, the force of gravity between mass one and mass two is exactly equal. Therefore, the gravitational force acting on the star is exactly equal to the gravitational force acting on the planet because Fg is equal between mass one and mass two. Pause the video to read question four. This question has to do with a lab that you completed. Even if you don't remember doing a lab and what was the dependent variable and independent variable, you can figure it out. If you read the question carefully, you'll see that you're releasing the cart at the top of a track to be accelerated down by Earth's gravity. If you release the cart at the top of the track and allow it to run for a very short amount of time, the velocity won't increase very much. However, if you allow the cart to run along the track for a very long stretch of the track, the velocity should go up reasonably. Therefore, A is correct. Velocity is dependent and length along the track is independent. Take a moment to read question five. This question is actually pretty easy. If you simply multiply the units of acceleration by displacement, you get meters per second squared times meters, which gives you meters squared over seconds squared. If you square root this whole quantity, you'll end up with meters per second, which is the unit for velocity. Familiar. Familiar. 